Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the 704 High School Highlight Podcast. My name is Jeff Taylor, Sports Director at Bay Hackle Sports. Thanks for checking us out. Make sure as you uh, watch us or listen to us, you subscribe on whatever, uh, however you get your podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe, like, comment. We love to keep in touch. So, my, today, very special guest, Coach Jay Pogue. And uh, Coach Pogue is kind of got a few things going on. Um, oh, yeah. and, and I'll just start by this. There is a brand new school. Uh, up north, uh, north of the city, Ambassador Christian, yes, and uh, you were just recently named the athletic director, mm -hmm. as well as the football coach, the head football coach. Absolutely. Um, we'll talk about your upbringing in a minute, but let's go ahead and just jump right into that. Yep. Um, talk to me a little bit about the school, um, because you and I have had some talk before this. Mm -hmm. um, very exciting to see what's going on there and, and what, what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me this morning. It's uh, exciting to be here and talking to you on the podcast and and really to talk to uh to you about what's going on at ambassador christian right in the heart of lake norman in huntersville on exit 25 uh just a wonderful wonderful um thing that god has going up there um i would say god cast a vision of this a couple of years ago two wonderful ladies melissa gibbs and nicole bryan they answered the call and stepped into what is really the, I would guess, the faith journey of a lifetime. Uh, and we're just blessed to be a part of it. Uh, just, uh, it, it's, it's something, it changes every day. Uh, right before our eyes, we're headed to open August 21st of this year. Uh, and a lot going on, a lot going on. And we'd love to, love to share with you a little bit. Coach, was there a vision? How did this kind of come about? Do you know if there was just a moment where you know, these two ladies or, you know, something was put in their heart to, to, to do something like this. I think that's exactly it. I think that's exactly it. And uh, uh, my wife and I, my wife is certainly, she's involved with the school as well and has a, a major role in it. But uh, we have, we, we've been in the area for a long time. We've actually been uh, out of the area for the last 10 years. But prior to that, we had been here for a long time in the Davidson area. And uh, and and the Gibbs family, especially uh, dear friends of ours, and uh, you know Nicole and Melissa. Um, I, like I said, I think God cast the vision, and 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 they were brave enough to answer it, and faithful enough to answer it. And as they started looking around, um, we were fortunate to get the call to come be a part of this thing, and uh, we haven't stopped smiling yet. Uh, for those who don't know, Melissa, uh, J.D. Gibbs' wife, yes. and J.D. passed a few years uh, back. Yeah. Um, I feel like for her, this is something very positive in her life, yeah. something to grab a hold of. Yeah, yeah, a wonderful lady for sure, and a great family. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's JD was such a a wonderful, wonderful person, and and he and I actually through the years for oh, over ten years, I guess we raised our boys together in the rec leagues and football, basketball, baseball, and and uh, just had some wonderful times, wonderful moments, and. Uh, so yeah, to, to have her involved in this certainly is special and, uh, and think a lot of her. Talk to me a little bit about the school. Obviously, uh, there is the academics as well as the athletics. Um, talk to me a little bit about maybe, the, the, maybe every school has kind of some core principles. Right. I'm assuming Ambassador Christian has some of those principles. Yeah. Can you walk me through just a little bit about the academic part and the athletic part and how it all kind of comes together? Yeah, and can I do it in 30 seconds? No. No, no, you don't need to. <laughs> but, That's but, the beauty of a but podcast. it is a great story. It is a great story. Um, the vision for Ambassador is we feel like we're at a point in time in today's culture, today's society, where families are looking for quality Christian education. And, uh, and to date, in most places, you've had to make a choice. Uh, large school, large public school, uh, with all the amenities of that that come with that and the opportunities for kids, or small private Christian school. And uh, we're sort of taking that model and flipping it upside down and shaking it. We're gonna be a large school. We're gonna be public school size, have the student body uh, capacity to offer all the amenities that a public school has. Uh, but we're going to be a quality private Christian education for these families. So uh, um, that's different. That's different. Uh, academically, um, we're going to be unique in that as well. Um, we're certainly going to be next level, uh, top shelf academics, honors classes, AP classes. You know, people uh, know the word college prep. Right. Uh, we actually call it calling prep. Um, 
I will give uh, a pat on the back to my wife, Amy. Uh, Amy is the, I say she's the rock star of our family. Uh, I get a lot of pats on the back and interviews and podcasts because of the sports piece of it, but she's the educator in our family. Right. She's, uh, she's handling our student services, our admissions there at the school, but um, it was a divine design moment for her one time and she actually developed a, a, cur a curriculum called calling prep so it's a it's a series of assessments tests all these different things that go into it that allow students to figure out how god has them hardwired uh, so that we call it their next 40 uh, in their next 40 years um, they're in a job they're in a profession that they're truly passionate about that they love that like me, I, I get up every morning, I love what I do, I was born to do this, and there are days when I'm like, they're actually paying me to do this. <laughs> um, that's what we want for our, for our students coming out of there. So you're gonna have next level academics on that side. There's also a side where uh, more and more kids these days are choosing not to go to college. Uh, yes. and, to, and to get into the workforce and not to accrue the debt that comes with that sometimes. Right. And, and they want to go straight into the workforce. So we're going to have a very unique, um, a very uh, world-class, if you will, trade, center, trade school. We'll call it a workmanship center. We'll offer the, uh, that track as well. Uh, it, it, our campus is a wonderful facility and we have plenty of land there. And you'll see that center going up here pretty soon. And you know, where that goes, we're excited about that too. Uh, and so n nobody uh, has really done that right. on both sides. We feel like this is going to be a model for future schools um, across the country maybe as they, as they look at private Christian education. So excited about both of those things uh, on the academic side and the people that we have in place to do that. So. I love the calling prep. Yeah. I just, I love that because I think, and, and you hit the nail on the head about, you know, some kids don't want to go to college or just don't feel, you know, uh, and I think that word calling yeah. is, is, is big. Oh, yeah. I think that there are, especially in today's world, I think more and more youngsters are starting to kind of hear their calling, if that makes sense. Right. Um, and maybe they're not put into the box they once were. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think for a school to be able to, to wrap their arms around them and help them through that, yeah. that's pretty powerful. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it really leads to some really special moments. Uh, Great conversations, I bet. Yeah, and some aha moments. And and, uh, and really, it's, it's um, you know, we'll stand up and say when we were coming through school, nobody ever asked us what we wanted to do or what we were right. passionate about. Right. Or, you know, it was just sort of Here's a, your checklist. It was a cookie cutter <laughs> model, I right. guess. And, right. And, you know, it's the, the world's changing and we've got to change with it and be, and be adaptable. And we want to see our kids happy. Right. Right. And uh, this and, is the And way I think to the cool that. part is talking with you, and we've, we've, like I said, had a couple conversations. You know, um, the one thing I've noticed is just, um, you know, I had the chance to actually tour where, the building and it's an awesome facility. And it's going to be awesome. You know, um, the word genuine comes up. I think kids really latch on to something when they see um, someone who's genuine right? And, and, and has that kind of feel. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's going to be a very relational school. The culture is going to be fantastic. And, you know, there's an old saying that uh, people really don't care what you know until they know that you care. Right. You know, sure. I said that right. Right. Um, no, it was. But, yeah, exactly. Uh, it <laughs> is about relationships, whether it's teachers or coaches or administrators or it's uh it's going to have that uh, that that aspect to the school as well. So educational side, first class, top notch, and and I love like I said the calling prep and then yeah. and, and the trade option is going to be fantastic. Talk a little bit about the academic side of it because I see you have your uh, the, the jump man symbol on there. The, the <laughs> um, athletic side. Of yeah, the it. athletic yeah. side. Yeah. Let's talk about that um, in terms of because yeah. there's some pretty cool things happening there. There are, there are, and uh, you know that's that's my sweet spot, I guess if if, if we if I have one, but. To, Certainly, um, we're going to roll out 18 sports in year one. Wow. And people look at me like, are you sure you want to do that? And yes, we do. And we, and we want to be, uh, we want to be excellent. Right. Uh, that's the, we, we've started with uh, the hiring the head coaches. That has been a phenomenal experience. Uh, I came along, I got here in December, coming back from Georgia where I was coaching over there and uh, started the process of trying to hire coaches and attract coaches and have just been overwhelmed by 
the people that want to be with us on this right. journey. Uh, so we are uh, two coaches away from being full on all the 18. We've got those guys in place. We just haven't announced them yet. That'll be coming next week for wrestling and softball. Excited to do that. But uh, some just wonderful uh, men and women of God that uh, have had so much success, so much experience. A lot of them uh, have coached in college. A lot of them are in Hall of Fame somewhere for, for their exploits. Uh, but what I tell groups of people when I talk to them is if you strip all that away, they're just really good people. Uh, that you want, um, I would want my kids. Right. Around. And uh, so, 18 sports coming out of the gate, um, and like I say, we're, we're, we're bound to determine that that's going to happen. Partnerships at the school have been really cool, uh, really exciting for us. Um, we jumped right away into a partnership with Nike. Uh, so, uh, it's something that had been in my past. I've always, in my travels, have always been a Nike school. So, it's always been a good association and, and you know they're recognized as the world leader in, in the sports stuff. Um, another conversation shortly thereafter led us into uh, being approved for the uh, Jordan Jumpman logo uh, brand, which I wore today for you. Uh, so very exciting, very exciting, very exclusive. Uh, I heard you say there are not many. Yeah, I think there's only 200 across the country, they say, that, that have it. Maybe and, three in Carolina? Yeah, there's three in Carolina. I think North Carolina, I guess. Yeah, I always got to say, <laughs> I just say Carolina, it's just what I do. Right. Um, so uh, so we're excited about that. That's, you know, swag for kids is, is big these days, right? Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of kids that come in and, uh, you know, want to come look at the school and, you know, for all the right reasons, but in the back of their mind, oh, you got the you got the Jumpman brand. So, right. So what what kind of walk away? <laughs> you know, the, and then the third one that just came along is is this baby right here. Um, if you're and most people aren't, but and I'll give you a real quick education. But in the world of football helmets, um, obviously, as a coach, as a parent, um, you want your kid in the safest helmet that you can get. And uh, we've struck a deal, a partnership with Vices. Uh, has, has been wonderful talking and getting to know those people. Vices, if you go look at the NFL uh, lab results, all this stuff is done out of Virginia Tech. Uh, consistently the top helmet in the industry as far as safety and, and being comfortable for the kids. I mean, it's not even close. Um, my, I've coached for a long time. Typically, you might have one kid in the locker room on the team who's, you know, dad parents may have some good resources financially and they go and buy a kid a vice's helmet uh everybody else doesn't have one and they walk right. around the whole season looking at it going i wish i had that and uh everyone on our team is going to be in a vice's helmet so uh that's pretty it, strong i think it speaks to the how serious we are about excellence how serious we are about safety for our kids and uh and we're excited about that too so with nike with Jumpman, with vices there's, there's a lot of cool things happening um, I will touch briefly on this summer. The, you know, we're going through a three and a half million dollar renovation of this facility. Uh, you know, they're saying June, July, at some point, we'll have a certificate of occupancy and be able to, to be in there. But, but we want to run a full summer program for all of our sports, uh, strength, pro, strength training, speed training, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, so again, the, you go back to. Melissa and the Joe Gibbs racing connection right. and all that. We've had our we've had five parent student info meetings over the uh, last several months. They've all been at Joe Gibbs Racing. They've been phenomenal. Uh, we're actually going to be working out this summer at the facility there at Joe Gibbs Racing uh, until we can get in our building. That's so, a pretty impressive, yeah, <laughs> pretty impressive it facility. And it's a great partnership to have. And then would love for you to investigate what they've got going there too. They have the world's largest human performance institute there uh it is unbelievable and it's uh, unbelievable that we get to partner with with them and have access to this thing but but picture you know in the world of athletics today everybody's talking about analytics and everybody's chasing that you know nth of a percentage to, right. to get better that's what this is and it's uh it's it's such a it's hard to describe until you see it but thousand cameras around top and bottom force plates on the ground uh, really tracking data from every movement you make. Uh, they're looking at strengths and weaknesses. Um, it can keep our athletes healthier. 
by just identifying different things in their body that we need to work on. We can individualize strength tra training programs. So we're going to have some access to that too, along with a lot of professional teams across the country. So uh, it's going to be cool being over there and being a part of that. So we're, we're blessed to be able to have that partnership. Um, you said you're pretty much staff with head coaches except for two. Let me ask you this, in terms of conversations that you had with the coaches who've joined, what was their kind of I, – I go back to, like, Scott Taylor. Yeah. Uh, you know, the coach at Myers Park for basketball. Right. Great man. Yeah. Uh, I know him well. We've had some great conversations. Um, I know, you know, how he feels about the kids in terms of not only ball players but as young men. Um, conversations they've had with you, how excited are they – to be to be jumping into this journey because for some it's yeah. it's it's probably a pretty big switch. It is. It, it's a faith journey for for all of us, and uh, we're all coming at it from different angles and different um, stages of our career, if you will. But uh, once you and you've been there, we we talked the other day. Once you're there and you meet the people, you see the facility, you hear the vision. Um, it, it's it gets you excited, right? And uh, you know somebody like Scott. Um, you know, Scott. Scott has a lot of ties up in the Lake Norman area, and uh, just a lot. It was, you know, it's, it's crazy and wonderful how God ties things together. And and um, it was one of those stories with Scott. Yeah. It was uh, he was looking for, for for something like this, right. and has been for a long time. Uh, and we're thrilled to have him as well as as the others. Oh, I mean, sure. they all have their their own individual stories. Right. They, they all have wonderful followings, and. Uh, couldn't be more excited for for all those folks and can't wait to sort of get them in front of the kids that, that, right. that will enroll there. And a little synopsis of all the coaches, you can go to, uh, I believe you guys have pretty much all the social media. You do. Uh, I've been checking out their social media. If you just yeah. search Ambassador Christian right. School, um, you can get the bios on yeah. the coaches. Yeah. Uh, you can get information about the school itself, yep. um, some cool stuff. So make sure you head over to all of their. Yeah. Um, I saw it on Instagram. I think I saw it on Facebook. I, Twitter maybe too. I can't oh, remember. Yeah. Oh, you're on. Yeah. Okay, they're on everything. I think um, it's X now, Jeff. Yeah, X. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, not hip enough for X yet. Uh, um, oh, let me say real quick, and we'll move on. But uh, we've we've got something wonderful coming up on Sunday afternoon, April 28th. That's next Sunday. Okay. Uh, Three o'clock. Uh, you can go to the website and RSVP. Um, we haven't been able to to take the people on campus right to date because of all the construction. So we've had all these meetings off campus. And uh, everybody is just really wanting to take a peek at the school. And we're finally to that point where we're about to open those doors. So next Sunday, 3 o'clock, um, at the school, right there on exit 25, uh, we're going to do a hard hat open house tour. Awesome. Um, everyone is invited. Come take a peek. Be there early. Um, and we'll do a tour of the school. There will be... Uh, you know, food trucks and ice cream trucks and that kind of stuff there. You'll have time to meet all the people, meet the coaches, and uh, and really just sort of see what we're doing and get all your questions answered. But we'd love to have you. And, of course, we'll have all the details on that on our website, BayHackleSports.com. I'll put it on all of my social media, so make sure uh, you can check that out. And we'll have all the details in our kind of lead-in um, as you – Click on the podcast. I always have a little description down at the bottom. Yeah. So we'll make sure we have all of that yeah. uh, so they can check that out. Sure. So – you you start in August. You'll end in May, June, May, May. Mm -hmm. um, f from let's do athletics first. Okay. Being athletic director, you would look back at year one. What would success be? Um, I think that's an easy one for for me. It's really laying the foundation for what's to come. That's what I was going to say. Building a culture? Yeah, building the, the culture is going to be phenomenal uh, with the people we have. But really, you know, we started this thing, uh, it was just a, you know, we're a high school. You know, I think it's important to say that. We're, and that's all we'll ever be as far as I know, but 9 through 12. And we were just going to start with ninth and 10th graders. At our first info meeting there way back, several months ago, there were a lot of rising juniors that showed up and basically please 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 take rising juniors and so we did and that has led to a whole flurry of those that class of uh students as well but uh but basically you're starting with you know mostly ninth graders right and, and a good many 10th graders a good many 11th graders you won't have a senior class year one so it's really important to, to establish the culture 
lay the foundation from an athletic standpoint you know i i'm a big believer over the years in it all starts with strength and speed uh it just has to there's not a magic pill you can take to be uh to be successful so we have to lay a foundation there we'll have a full-time strength and speed coach uh, uh, Coach Lou Stevens is coming to us from Concord High School, spent okay. a little time at Cannon, a wonderful, wonderful coach and, and loves that part of the business. Um, we'll actually have a strength and speed class built into the school day as part of their class load. So we won't have to have kids coming before school or staying after school. Uh, we'll take care of that four times a week. But it, it starts there and that becomes part of our DNA and then, uh, and then just just like I say, the, the foundation of, of fun and sports and, and it's just, um, it's going to be exciting to, to see these kids come in here and grow up right before our eyes. Um, so, uh, and, and the ones that have already enrolled are, you know, they're so excited. Right. They're so excited. And uh, we think this summer will be just an explosion of, we think our rosters will change every day this summer. Right. Uh, as, as people get to know us and go through the processes of applying and, and enrolling. And to start a new school, especially high school, pretty much from scratch, it's a pretty big responsibility in terms of starting a school, knowing that, you know, you're building these kids for the future. And for some of the juniors who've decided to jump in, yeah. they're two years from college. That's right. So now to help guide and direct the juniors. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a large, large venture for sure. Uh, have got some great people in place. I want to. I want to mention uh, our leader, uh, Dr. Zach Gatier. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, you about because yeah. he's coming from uh, yeah. a pretty pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's a God story in itself. Uh, several years ago, um, if you know anything about private Christian education, then you've heard of a school called Valor Christian in Denver, Colorado. Um, they've been in existence for 17 years, and in in our world. It's, it's the Mac Daddy of, it's, it's the cream of the crop. It's right. right there at the top as far as private Christian education. It ties together, you know, the, the active faith component, the academic component, and the athletics. They do it all so well. And so uh, there was actually a time, several, uh, three winters ago maybe, Melissa was out in Colorado on a ski trip and texted that she was going to drive down and check it out and uh, I think she went down and walked around and she sent me a text that night that said school goals dot 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 and it was sort of has become the model of right. what we want to be you know God weaves this thing together like he does and as we were first starting out Nicole Melissa Amy myself um, you know how are we gonna do this and uh, so we partnered with their first head of school uh, a gentleman named Kurt, who is, has been wonderful through this process. He started that school way back 17 years ago, was their head of school for a number of years. He acts as a consultant now for other schools popping up around the country. So we hired Kurt as a consultant, and he sort of, every week we would talk with Kurt virtually, and that sort of got us going. Um, and then as we start to layer in everything, and we, we really need a head of school, um, Kurt pointed us to this gentleman at Valor who has been there 16 of the 17 years, um, has worn a lot of hats there. He's a, he's a super cool dude. Uh, Zach Detier, uh spent his whole life in Denver, and uh, three kids, three teenage boys, and uh, you know, he flies out with his family, again, meets the people, hears the vision, sees, you know, it's just like the spirit catches you, and. Zach accepted the job and is moving his family cross country to, wow. to be a part of this thing and to lead us. And uh, right now we're in sort of a, we have him here for two weeks. He has to go back for two weeks, that kind of thing. So he'll be back Monday, I think, Monday night um, for another couple of weeks. But uh, as we lead, you know, into that uh, April 28th op uh, open house. So uh, just, he's perfect. And, and, and God, you know, God's, the way God works, it, it's, you wouldn't expect anything less. He's the perfect guy for this job, and and uh, we're just excited and blessed that he's that he's a part of us. Wow, pretty awesome. So let me ask you this real quick. Um, so we've talked about the school, but let's just a little bit more about you real quick. Yep. Um, played sports growing up. What kind of maybe drew you into into coaching? My family is all about 
sports. <laughs> uh, it's just ball all the time. Uh, so I was a, I was, I never stopped. I was, a, my dad was a college basketball player. Uh, have uncles that were the same thing. A lot of, a lot of su sports success, I guess, across both sides of our family. Um, but uh, I was the shortstop in baseball, the quarterback in football, and the point guard in basketball. And uh, it just never stopped. And it was, it was my passion. You know, it was my calling, you know, right. and really um, knew from an early age that, you know, at that point, you all think you're going to play in the NFL. Right. And, you know, <laughs> I'll retire when I'm 45 and, right. you know, have plenty of, you know, right. do whatever <laughs> I want to do. But uh, so when it, you know, but it all stops, you know, for everyone. And uh, when it stopped, there was no doubt I wanted to get into coaching. Uh, I wanted to stay in it and had the opportunity to go to North Carolina State University for a few years there, uh, moved on to Lenore Ryan University in Hickory, North Carolina, um, and then spent a lot of years at Presbyterian College down in uh, Clinton, South Carolina. Yep. Some really good years down there. Uh, daughter graduated from there, son-in-law graduated from there. Um, so, um, and then ended up coming back to Davidson where I played um, uh, in the early 80s and uh, got to spend a lot of years there. So. Uh, um, just been doing this coaching thing for a long time. We were living there in Davidson for 12 years, coaching ball, and uh, and just had a great life. And there was a moment in time when God poked me on the shoulder, sitting on an airplane, um, headed out of town, that uh, I was in the wrong seat. And <laughs> I could come back another time and spend about six hours with you telling you this journey, but it led us real quickly to um, to a faith journey to Georgia. Uh, I'm from Dalton, Georgia, uh, in North Georgia, and we went back to Georgia, and I opened up a Parisi Speed School. Uh, my wife went to work at the local private Christian school there, Christian Heritage School in Dalton, and, uh, and there we were. Uh, we were doing a lot of kingdom work through the business. Uh, she, was, she was at a really good place there at the school. Uh, long story short, uh, they needed a football coach at some point and they came and asked me would I come over there and felt like it was a door that God had opened for us and tried to do both for a couple of years and found out that the area coaches don't like it when you're training a couple thousand kids and you're also the head, <laughs> head coach, coach at a private school <laughs> and they start transferring <laughs> over. Uh, so we ended up getting out of the, uh, the that business and just sort of for the last 10 years have just sort of sunk into that, that role as the head football coach over there. And then when Melissa and Nicole came calling on this venture, it was, there was just no doubt that, you know, that this was what we were supposed to do. So uh, just thrilled to be back. Awesome. Let me ask you a couple other quick questions mm -hmm. in terms of, you mentioned you ran the business and some kids, you were the coach and kids transfer and stuff like that. The transfer portal for college. Um, I've, People who've watched the podcast, yeah. I, I, I waver. Um, I, there's parts I don't like. There's more I don't like than I do like. Your thoughts on that? Because for me, I get it in some instances, but for me, I, I, what it's doing to high school sports, oh, yeah. um, I, I just feel like for the kids who have a shot and have given all this time and energy, they're not getting their chance. Uh, if People who've watched the podcast, I yeah. talked with Tony Bennett, the head coach at UVA, when he was in town, and he said, you know, I had six spots. Yeah. Five or the portal, and that left me one for an incoming freshman. Yeah. Your thoughts on it? It certainly has, the world has certainly changed. I will say first, being a college coach is certainly a lot tougher these days than it used to be. Right. Um, you look at the staffs nowadays, they're having to hire staffs to control the portal. They're having to hire staffs to control the NIL right. collectives. Right, right. Uh, and they're spending an enormous amount of time um, re-recruiting their own rosters, right, because there's so much movement. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, um, it, it's just crazy. It's like the wild, wild west right <laughs> now. I read yesterday um, that the NCAA is now going to allow unlimited transfers with no penalty. So See, yeah, I just, that's yeah, – yeah. And one of the coaches, I can't remember which one, his comment, I thought it was a good point, was, okay, so in the old days, if you transferred, if you got to a school, you signed a letter of intent, you transferred, typically you had to sit out a year. Right. And, and in some cases, if you were transferring within the same conference, 
your head coach had to sign off on it. I mean, really? Yeah, they wouldn't let you just go in, in the same conference where right. we're going to have to play against you. Right. So now, you know, the, they, they've opened it up in the last couple of years where you can transfer and pretty much that first transfer, you can be eligible right away, which was a huge deal. But now to open it up for multiple transfers, I mean, the coach yesterday said, what about their degree? You know, every time you transfer, you're probably losing credits. Right. And, and it just gets real murky. And, 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 and not only that, I, you know, it's like, and it, uh, this will come out wrong yeah. probably, but it's a podcast. We can be yeah. honest. For me, why is the kid transferring two or three times? Yeah. Is it because he or she is not getting their way? Yeah. Because maybe they're not putting in the time and effort and energy right. to become better? Maybe. And, you know, and yeah. it's, it's, it's. There's yeah. reasons. So, so go back to the COVID years. Okay. And this is where it all started. Right. Um, there was such a, and this is what's killed the high school athlete or, or really hurt the, the high school athlete. So COVID years came along. At the same time, the NCAA opened up the transfer portal. Okay. And then they came back and they awarded, because some of those schools didn't play or they played a limited spring schedule, they awarded them an extra year. At the same time, if you get hurt, you can get a medical red shirt. So you've got kids that have played college college football for six, seven, seven years. years. right. I want to say there's a kid that just there was, transferred to Miami in his ninth year. Yes. So now you think about I thought the, it was eight or nine. Yeah, yeah, think about the safety implications of that. A, a almost 30-year-old grown man going up against a freshman in college, it might be 19. 18, right, uh, you know. 18, 19, yeah. So you, it, it's just it's crazy. Um, but from a college coaching standpoint, in a world of when now – Right, I mean, I, or get fired, right. win now and move up. Right, then you know it's it's literally a year at a time. And as you're looking to build your roster, which has become a one year entity, there's no you're not I, counting on kids being there no. for four years. So right. it's really what this is my team this year. I don't have no idea what my team's going to look like next year. So you're concerned with today, and we got to win today, All right? And so now as I'm building that roster. You would think, wouldn't I rather have a kid in the portal that's 21, 22 years old, been right. in college three years, been, right. on, been on the I, nutrition plan, been on the strength and speed plan? Or should I take this 18-year-old, this skinny kid that I think is going to be a good player, but I'm going to have to develop him? And I've he may to, not play to his junior yeah, year. I, and I won't be there his junior right. year most likely. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, so it's 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 a – this whole mm -hmm. win at all costs is, is really – messed with the the pendulum of of college sports and and i've heard estimates that the high school athlete uh you know there may be as many as 50 percent less scholarships for high school athletes these days um you know if you're if you're a four star or five star type kid just a freak that you know those kids are now being offered seventh and eighth grade right uh, but for all you know in the old days if you if you were a good player there were there was a you, you, we could go find a scholarship for you somewhere, right. or some level. Uh, but now so many of those really good players are having to walk on at schools and sort of earn their way. And what happens, the transfer piece of it, you know, where a kid may have signed at, I don't know, pick somewhere. Pick, uh, Virginia. Virginia. He may have signed at Virginia. Uh, these days, it, maybe he does it. Maybe he has to sign with uh, Wofford, right? And he goes to Wofford, he has a really good year or two, and then he jumps in the portal trying to get to that next level where he wanted to be at to begin with. Right. So there's just – it's it's. And it's, what's getting crazy. crazy now, there's so many people in the portal. Yeah. They're not spots for them. No, no. And then what I get to the point of going is, okay, so I let's say hypothetically I played basketball at Virginia. Yeah. I go, listen, I'm, heading the, I'm hitting the portal. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling Coach Bennett, hey, I'm hitting the portal. Nothing happens. Yeah. Then what? Do, do you lose your scholarship? Do you well, go back to Coach Bennett and go, uh, I'm sorry, I need to come back? Well, chances yeah. are Coach Bennett has already, already been moved in the portal on. Right. replacing right. you. Right. right? So, so now it's – and, yeah. you know, the thing that I've always – and I uh, listen, same as your family. My yeah. family, we're just – we're sports 24-7 yeah. uh, yeah. or whatever. You just lose some of the purity. You do. You and do. and I get the NF, I get I, – listen, I get the pros. It's business. Yeah. I understand that. College was – when we were, I mean, you know, I played Division Three football, and, and you know, it, it was football. Yeah. And even then, I don't know about yourself, but, like, even for me back in the day when it was the late 80s, you know, um, you know, we basically football season was when we did our stuff. Yeah. 
it was Division Three, one Division One, but it was Division Three. And basically, when the season ended in November or December, we took four or five months off. Right. Before, you know, it wasn't twenty four seven. It yeah. wasn't that. And so, yeah. for me, it's just it. You know, little league and pop Warner is still pure. Mm-hmm. And you know, high school. You know, it, there's some things you know dripping into that. You know that we've seen. It's a trickle down um, effect, and and, sure. and, yeah. and you start to lose that effect. Yeah. So um, let me ask you one final question. Um, so back to uh, Ambassador Christian for a second. Sports wise, so a part of the NCIS AA? Not yet. Okay. Uh, there's processes that you have to go through. So uh, we don't really know what that's going to look like. Uh, how long it would take. Our intention is to apply. For the NCIS AA. Got it. Um, but there are, you know, it's it's there, there's all sorts of hoops that yep. you jump through. Right. When can you play varsity sports? And then you apply, and typically there's a provisional year. So Got it. That, that's the plan at some point to, to, to be a member there. So we hope that works out. But you've had schools reach out and go, hey, we'll play you. Like, you well, we, we're building schedule. schedule. Yep. I've got the full football schedule already built. Uh, it'll be a fun football schedule, uh, 10 straight road games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're building facilities, hey. and uh, it'll you know football will probably facility wise we'll be ready in year two we hope, uh, but for year one we're going to be road warriors. I, hey. I sort of like that. I mean it's yeah. I mean yeah. you know I, I, I don't think it say, gives us a little grit. Well, and, I think the cool yeah. part, yeah. you know, like you said to a point, yeah. you know, for me that way you know the year one, listen you got go out and have fun. That's right. I mean you're a part of something special. Yeah. Go out and, and rock it out. You're the first team. Right. And that's, when, listen, that's. When I tell those kids when they're my age, they'll all be all Americans because we all get better the older right. we get. <laughs> right. But they'll be able to look back on this and say, you know what? I was a part of the group that started that. And that's right. that's a legacy that they'll they'll have the rest of their lives. And uh, it's exciting. It's going to be special. It is. Come see us on Sunday, uh, next Sunday, the 28th, 3 o'clock. Go to the website, ambassadorchristian.com, RSVP, so we know you're coming. And uh, it'll be a wonderful afternoon. Love to have all of you. Coach. Thank you, Jeff. Blessings to you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for all you do. I'm sure it's going to be awesome. It is. Much success. Hey, that is it for this episode of the 704 High School Highlight Podcast. As I said, make sure you subscribe, like, comment. We'd love to keep in touch. We appreciate you taking time to listen and watch. And as always, have a good week.